Hello and welcome to Let's Play Heroes of the Monkey Tavern with me, Bring It On. A Heroes of the Monkey Tavern was released in 2016. It was both developed and published by Monkey Stories, who I believe is a solo developer, so this whole game was done by a single person, if I'm not mistaken. It is a grid-based dungeon crawler of the same genre as the Legend of Grimrock and the Eye of the Beholder franchises, which is one of my favorite genres, uh, right behind CRPGs and TRPGs. I have played this game a little in the past, I don't think I've made it past the halfway point of the game. Uh, but I do have some experience with the classes, their progressions, I know where some of the secrets are on some of the levels. Uh, so the first few levels should be pretty easy. Uh, the game does ramp up difficulty pretty quickly though, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, without any further ado, let's start a new adventure. Every story has a beginning. Ours begins in a tavern. The Monkey Terror. Where four heroes, yes, four great heroes, are spending their money. A few days ago they were rich. But it was a few days ago. Now they even have to sell their precious equipment to keep the party going. Until there is nothing to stop. And then comes a man who will change the turn of this masquerade. Hey guys! I heard your stories. You seem to be four strong heroes who could accept something challenging. Because I know a place where you will find tremendous treasures. But, I have to warn you, they're all terrible. But, our heroes do not bother to talk anymore. They thirst for adventure. Alright, welcome to the party creation. It's very straightforward. Uh, I'm going to go over the attributes first, then we'll go through all the classes. Uh, each class does bring something unique to the table. So anyway, uh, strength increases the damage you inflict. Dexterity allows you to hit more often and increases the chance to dodge the enemy's attack. Intelligence gives you more mana. And vitality gives you more health. Alright, so first up is the warrior. Uh, there are no racial traits in the game. Uh, you just change a portrait, but it doesn't give you any bonuses to any of your attributes. So the warrior wears heavy armor. Uh, the warrior is the war machine of this world. They can skillfully handle any weapon or armor and use a shield. So only two classes have shield proficiency, the warrior and the paladin, which gives you a 1 in 5 or a 20% chance to block an attack. Uh, the warrior's special skill that he brings is he is proficient in every weapon. So no matter what weapon he equips, whether it's a sword, a hammer, an axe, he gets a plus 1 bonus to it, which I believe increases damage by 15% for every plus 1 you have. So a very good all-around character. Uh, the Barbarian wears light armor. Uh, the Barbarian represents the power of muscle during the battle. He is specialized in axes, and if he is trained hard enough, he'll be able to handle two weapons at a time. When the Barbarian's health is low, he'll become berserk, increasing the damage inflicted. So that's his special thing, is when he drops below 40% health, he gets a bonus to his damage. Uh, later on, he can become ambidextrous. Uh, the Rogue can as well. And he's proficient in axes. The rogue wears cloth armor. Uh, the rogue is a bane once you put a dagger into his hands, and he will learn to have one in both hands. His talent to detect secret passages like no one else makes him invaluable to the team. So the rogue, again, can become ambidextrous like the barbarian. Uh, he's proficient with daggers, and his special ability is that he can detect secrets and traps, which is very handy, but you don't need it. As long as you're thorough, you can find all the secrets. You don't need his ability to do so. But it's nice in case you're not paying attention because a little message pops up on screen saying so there's, you know, there's something out of place. So it can be handy. The archer wears light armor. The archer is a ranged warrior par excellence. He has such bow mastery that he can even increase the damage inflicted with his bow. I've never used the class, but I think all he gets is a damage multiplier to his bow, 
That's his only special ability, so... It's not bad, but it's not, not great either. The Paladin wears heavy armor. The Paladin stands like a wall in front of his enemies. When he uses his shield, he ravages them with his mace. He can also heal his teammates. So maces, flails, and hammers are all considered hammers. Uh, the Paladin has hammer proficiency, as does another class. Uh, he also has shield proficiency like the warrior, so a 20% chance to block an attack. And he can learn healing spells later on. Sounds really awesome, really well-rounded, but he's not that great. Uh, I'll explain why in a second, once I get to the other healing class. Uh, so the monk wears cloth armor. A monk does not need a weapon to wound his enemies. His gods turn him into a human weapon. On higher levels, he can achieve the supreme reign of fist technique. I've never used the monk either, so I don't know how good he actually is. It's his attributes. A lot of dexterity. Uh, the Priest, which is the other healing class, wears cloth armor. A uh, Priest heals his teammates like no one else. They say that at a high level he will learn to resurrect them. Although he is not a warrior, he can easily handle a mace. There's not a lot of loot in this game, so you typically don't want to bring two classes that share the same proficiency. So the Priest and the Paladin, for instance. The Priest, I would argue, is a better class than the Paladin. Uh, they start with a heal at level 1. Uh, they don't have shield proficiency, so you can only have two things equipped at any given time. Whether it's a weapon and a shield, spell and a shield, uh, weapon and a spell. So the Paladin has hammer proficiency, shield proficiency, and healing spells. You have to choose two of those to take. Uh, well, not to take, you can swap out in combat, but it's it's a bit of a hassle. Because you're, you're getting attacked while you're trying to change equipment or spells. So it, he's a bit of a weird class. And again, the, the Paladin doesn't start with a healing spell either. And early on, healing spells are extremely, extremely useful. The Elementalist wears cloth armor. Uh, the Elementalist has attained the whole magical knowledge of this world in order to perform the most powerful attacks on his enemies. The Elementalist does not start or does not have any sort of weapon proficiency, I don't think, but they can use offensive magic. Uh, so this game does, the attacks are based off rolls, so there's a chance to miss your attacks. Magic does not have that chance. Uh, if you cast a spell, it's going to hit the enemy. Also, the Elementalist does get an Ice spell, which is very good because it freezes the enemy, which is extremely handy. But yeah, let's go and put our party together. I'm going to bring a Paladin, even though I don't think that they're a great class. Uh, let's make him a Dwarf. We'll do Strength and Vitality. Actually, you know what? It might be better to do dexterity to hit with. Maybe I'll do that. That looks pretty good. Alright, then he's already a barbarian. Um, do something like that. For a higher chance to hit. Uh, let's change this portrait. I'm going to go with this portrait instead. I'm going to bring a rogue. I don't think that I need a rogue. You know, I might bring a priest instead. Because the resurrect might come in handy later. Because uh, if you lose a teammate or a party member goes down, there's only two ways to bring him back. The priest resurrect spell, and then there's these fountains you can find. But the fountains are extremely scarce, and I don't think they refill. So you got to be careful about teammates going down, because it's going to put you at a huge, a huge disadvantage. Um, so I might bring a priest and an elementalist. Eh, let's do a rogue. I'm gonna bring a rogue instead. You wanna put points into intelligence for the rogue because that determines whether or not they detect uh, traps and secrets. I think it's a default 75% chance. And then every point into intelligence past that adds 5%. So that's now 85% and like a 90% right there. Not gonna be very combat focused. And we're actually gonna make this his portrait. And the Elementalists will make that their portrait and just put points into intelligence for more mana. Because, again, you can't boost your spell's damage, but casting more spells because you have more mana is the way to go. I'm going to keep it on normal because the game, again, does ramp up difficulty very, very quickly. And here we go. So if you played a game like Legend of Grimrock before, this should look familiar to you. And as you go, you do map out the floor. And you can find secrets that will be like 
you know, stones out of place you can click on that'll open a secret passage and things like that. Now, unlike games like Legend of Grimrock, you don't have a front line and a back line. They all just share a line. Like, they're all on the same row. So, you can't really tank. There's really no reason to build a tank character because it's not going to do anything. <laughs> you want damage. Damage is the key to success here. Alright, so here's our first puzzle. Just have to ring all these gongs. We got a shield. And some cloth armor. I'll give that to the elementalist, I think. Not worried about the uh, barbarian being armored because, again, once he drops below that 40% threshold, he gets a boost to his damage. Which is nothing to shake a stick at. Also, I did select the wrong portrait here. I wanted the male portrait, but this this is fine. Alright, knife. We'll give that to the rogue. We need a key to progress here. Uh, keep an eye on sconces and stuff too. If they are off centered, uh, then you can click on them and it usually opens up a secret passage. Nothing to worry about here yet, though. Let's see. I think I'm about to have our first combat, if I remember correctly. No? I thought there was a uh, fight in here. Oh, here we go. Alright, first combat down. Also, when you level up, you do gain experience for killing enemies. Uh, you don't get to allocate your own skill points. Everything is done automatically. Uh, every class has a set progression that they follow, uh, which you can see in the manual. The game does have a, a manual with it. And so you can plan ahead and plan accordingly. There's also a rest mechanic. Uh, there's no penalty for resting. You don't get ambushed or anything, so after every encounter, you should probably rest. Get your mana and health back. All right, we have our key to progress. Oftentimes, these lion heads are associated with traps and shoot fireballs, so be cautious with them. Uh, that one's not because I guess it's to let uh, force you to lower your guard next time you see a lion head. All right, plus one dexterity. I'm gonna give that to I guess the rogue. Mana Potion to the Elementalist, so she can maintain her offense in combat. Game saved. Let's see. Yeah, we'll go this way first. It is a dead end, is it? Hmm. Okay. Which way first? Oh, there's a mace or a oh, hammer. And a spider. Oh, also, unlike Legend of Grimrock, where positioning and dodging around enemies is part of the uh, part of the combat experience here, if you flee or try and dodge around, you take damage. So it's not... You have to hold your ground when you fight. Or you'll die very quickly. So whenever you see an enemy, the best thing to do is try and find a choke point to position yourself in, because if another enemy shows up, you you want to force them to fight you one at a time. If you fight two enemies at a time, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bad time. Because uh, other Grid-based dungeon crawlers are very dodging around 
is a large part of those games. This one is not. Alright, so some armor. We'll give that to her, I guess. And I guess also to her. So I think she has the least amount of health, right? Or she might be tied with the rogue for 100, yeah. This one's out of place. There's a trap here, which is also indicated by the, uh, well, <laughs> it's trying to show off that rib cage there. So let me rest and fix that. <laughs> I have to hand it to the game though. The uh, the soundtrack and everything is very relaxing. I think I can actually play music while we're exploring. Whoops, let's uh, play that. Yeah, I really like the feel of this game. Yeah, it's nothing, it's not extremely elaborate or anything, but it has a good feel to it. Alright, map out this little room real fast. Only the one who knows will be at peace. Come on, cut him down. Perfect. Rest up. It is a little time consuming, but again, it is 100% worth resting after every encounter. Especially since I don't have a priest in the party. So to make it hard to sustain in a lot of these fights. And potions are extremely rare. Not extremely rare. But they're uncommon. And there are some fights that you do need to use potions in. So you don't want to waste them in like these, these encounters. So that's why you want to rest between most fights. At least in my experience. I'm not an expert in the game. Again, I haven't beaten it. I've just made it to the, about the halfway point a couple of times. All right. I thought there was another trap down here. I think it, or not trap, another secret. I think it's right there. Let me go back and check that after I open up this. This is gonna take us to the next floor. Or there'd be another secret. Cause we found the gong secret. We found the sconce, the off-centered sconce. Yeah, I think there's one more. I think there's a stone secret. Let me head back. I'm just going to look at the map. Make this a little faster. Avoid the trap in the center there. It's all the way back at the beginning. I could be mistaken. There might not be something back here. Um, what I might do off camera between episodes is go back through uh, places I've explored and look for secrets. So I can show them off in the next. Next episode. Oh, yeah, there it is, yep. Another wood hammer. Um, give it to the barbarian, so he has some extra damage. There might be a secret down here as well, unless I, unless that's what this uh, alcove is. Let me go check real fast. Leave no stone unturned. Or unpressed, I guess, in this case. Yeah, that was the... Uh, Secret. Okay, cool. I think that's everything on this floor. So we can head to the second floor. And try not to get brutally murdered by the uh, the new enemy type that's going to be there. I thought you leveled up on the first floor. I guess not. I think different classes level up at different paces. <laughs> Whoops. Darn you. Alright, let's rest up before we go up there. 
you can backtrack between floors as well. So if there's a fight you just can't get past, uh, you can always go to the next floor, continue gaining experience, and come back and try it again. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it, that was actually the case. So I don't look like a fool when I go to <laughs> backtrack later on and I can't. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh... Oh, hey. A knife. We'll give it to her in case she runs out of mana in combat. And then I think... Yeah, that works. Another dead end. I'm pretty sure the stones you press in, they're always the same. So you just look to the top right whenever you look at a wall and see if there's something you can interact with. Uh, maybe I should go the other way first. It seems more dead endy. Alright, so probably going to be more than one spider in here to fight. Yeah, I see two. I don't know if we can take on two in a row. Let me quick save. We'll try it. Just stay here so we uh, force them to come at us one at a time. Yeah, we're taking quite a beating. I don't think I need to use more mana to take this guy out. Yeah. We'll save it for this guy. So he's now berserk, so if he can land his attacks, we'll be in good shape. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, so I think we have to do this in a different order. Let me reload that. Find a different fight first. Yeah, I already see it right here. Let's read the note first. Or the sign. The secret belongs to the stone. Yep. Easy peasy. We'll see if we can find an easier fight to level up off of, and then we'll go back and deal with those pesky spiders. I'm going to do it this way. I'll give her the plus two, I'll give the plus one to the barbarian. Because again, you want the barbarian to hit that 40% mark for that bonus damage. I have to be careful where I go here, because there is... room you have to uh you don't want to you don't want to enter it while everybody's level one because it's gonna be a bad time all right whoopsies wasn't fast enough so i don't think you can disarm this trap so you just have to be fast our mana potion goes to the elementalists Alright, rest up again, then we'll divvy up our loot. <laughs> no mistaken, this should be a hammer upgrade. Yeah, stone hammer. A little better. Give that to the barbarian for when he can dual wield. And she has all the mana potions. Oh wait, can I disarm the trap with that? No. I'm gonna quick save diligently here because again, I think there's a room up here. 
They were probably going to die in if I just walk into it. Yep, it's this room. We're not going over there. No, wait. No, this isn't it. We can take a snake. Up. Not gonna not gonna risk it. Nice, we are barbarian leveled up. He got one strength. Does he get health too? Yeah, he got 12 health as well. He's close to leveling up. Close and a little bit further off. So yeah, some classes do level up faster than others because they have uh, lower requirements. So the hat gives you plus 10 mana, right? Yeah. We'll give this to the rogue. Really missing a little bit of mana. I'm going to rest anyway. <laughs> because I can. And nothing can stop me. And now it might be worth... Well, I mean, it's just one level 2 character. I wonder if I can drop that gate after I open it. So maybe what I can do is go fight those spiders. Kill one of them. Drop the portcullis. Rest, then fight the second one. It's only back at the beginning. Whoops. Right, wait, where? Oh, it's behind me. So I wonder, let me quick save. I'm going to see if I can open and close this. I can't, perfect. Alright, so we'll fight one, we'll drop it. That'll be the play. We'll, we'll get, should get two or three level ups here. So we got heal on our paladin, a rogue gain dexterity, and she got poison powder. Which I don't think is any better than, uh... Oh, it is better. It has more damage. And it costs less mana. Wait, how do I equip this? Oh, up here. There we go. Alright, then let's rest, then we'll fight the other spider. Now, is this over time, or is it just... Yeah, it is damaging over time. That's fine. Well, sweet. What do we have here? A Roman sword. Does more damage. He's not proficient in it, but it's better than the wooden hammer that he currently has equipped. So, no reason not to put it on. Alright. So if we can't pick another fight before we wrap this episode up. We'll go straight this way. There's a secret right here. What's in here? A mana potion. And a voodoo staff. Plus one intelligence. Jeez, this is a human bone. Mana plus ten. We'll give that to her. And to her. She's getting kitted out before everybody else is. Plus one of dexterity. This might be better on the barbarian for a higher chance to hit. Then we'll give this to the rogue. 
than this to her. Oh, it has to go over there? And plus one armor. That's pretty handy. We'll give that to the rogue so when he unlocks ambidextrous, he can duel with those daggers. Pretty good. I will take it. Let's see. I want to get into one more fight. Here we go. Two snakes. All right. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. I just kicked my chair. Shouldn't be a problem. Perfect. All right, let's rest up. Go loot this room, and then that'll that'll do it. Okay, so there are. This is less often, though. I don't. It doesn't seem like they get hit less often to me. Um. <laughs> But the game wouldn't lie. Light armor will give that to the Barbarian. Since he doesn't have a shield, he doesn't have a chance to block and negate damage. So increasing his armor is the way to go. Alright, cool. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this. What are we doing? Um, let's get back to where we haven't explored and then we'll call it an episode. Again, off camera, I might go back through the floor and make sure I didn't miss any secrets. Uh, all the places that I've explored so far. Uh, let's just do it this way. All right, I'm gonna call the episode. Yeah, can't talk. I'm gonna call the episode here, and the next one will continue through the second floor, and I guess get to the third one, and so on and so forth. I think there's only eight floors in the game, so it's not you know an extraordinarily long game, but it's fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.